right? What's up, Business 100? Hope everyone's doing well. Sorry that uh, this recording, the lecture is uh, appearing late this week, but here we go. With chapter six, when we talk about business formation, the big thing everyone should keep in the back of their head is the probably the least favorite thing everyone likes to talk about. No, I'm not talking politics. I'm not talking religion. I'm talking taxes. When we talk about business formation, what we're really talking about is taxes. Okay. Now, while we have the right to choose uh, to become business owners, we have the right to keep profits, right? The government has a right to taxes, right? We have roads, we have police, we have fire departments. Uh, we have some of these services that we don't really think about every day, but here we are, those taxes go to help support those services. So when we choose a business, we are essentially choosing how we wanna be taxed. So let's jump right into the slides and take a look at specifically what we're talking about. All right, chapter six. So today we're gonna to take a look at the characteristics of the four basic forms of business ownership. And if you think about, as also as we think about taxes, think about if you're gonna start your own business, what are you going to do? What type of business formation would you choose, right? How would you become a bar? What business ownership format would you choose? Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of a sole proprietorship, the pros and cons of a partnership as a form of business ownership, why corporations have become the dominant form of business ownership, explain why limited liability companies are becoming an increasingly popular form of business ownership, and taking a look at the advantages and disadvantages of franchising. All right. So when we talk about forms of business ownership, what we're really talking about is uh, one of the easiest ways to get started, the easiest ways to have your own business is by being a sole proprietor, okay? In a sole proprietorship, company earnings are given the same treatment as the owner's income. The debts incurred by the company are treated as the owner's debts. There are several different types of partnerships. Originally, when I uh, first started a uh, business with my wife, our business was a sole proprietorship. The biggest advantage to a sole proprietorship is the ease at which it takes to get started, okay? Um, here in San Diego, you fill out a license. Um, here they have what's called a business tax certificate. Once you fill that out, you're off and running. Okay, that's it. And in San Diego in particular, it's a $35 fee. So essentially, if you have 35 bucks, an idea, product or a service you wanna sell, you're off and running. You got yourself a business, right? Uh, partnerships, there's a lot of different partnerships out there, okay? We've got general partnerships. These guys take an active role in managing their businesses. They have unlimited liability or claims against the firms, meaning that you have a store, you have a general partnership, someone slips in your store, they can sue you, right? You have no protection, okay? Now, corporations, it's probably the most popular form of business ownership in America right now. A business entity claiming to be a corporation has to file well, articles of incorporation with appropriate state agencies, pay the states and corporation fees and meet other requirements. Corporations are like uh, people because they can lawfully participate in all business activities that a natural person can participate in. Uh, we switched from a sole proprietorship, my wife and I, with our company, Business Bridging Solutions, to a corporation. The biggest advantage, again, taxes. As a sole proprietorship, we were both taxed on income that we paid ourselves and the income the business made. 
here with a corporation, we're taxed separately in that, okay? The amount of deductions and the amount of things that you get to write off from a tax perspective, it's much more advantageous uh, when you set up a corporation than when you are as a sole proprietorship. Our tax liability decreased significantly uh, when we be uh, transferred from a sole proprietorship to a corporation. So that's the biggest advantage that you'll see for small businesses. Limited liability company, also known as an LLC, are legally considered to be separate from their owners. Here we go, same scenario. You have a store and someone slips and fall. They can't come after you personally, right? They can try and sue the corporation, right? The LLC, but they cannot sue the owner individually, personally for that slip and fall, okay? So that is the biggest advantage for someone becoming an LLC. <laughs> Here we go. Some of the more, more the advantages and disadvantages of sole proprietorship, okay? The paperwork and costs associated with sole proprietorships are minimum, as I've already described, right? The owner is in full control of the business and retains all of the profits. Banks and other financial institutions are skeptical when it comes to lending money for sole proprietorships. The debts of the business are treated as, you know, as personal debt, paying salaries and the talent employees demand it becomes difficult and the owners tend to work longer and under a lot of stress. I'll tell you right now, the stress level between being a sole proprietorship and being an S corporation is the exact same. If you're gonna be a small business owner, you're gonna have stress. It's just that simple. There's no getting around it. So um, keep that in mind if you're considering becoming your own boss and having your own business, there is just stress that naturally comes with it. Most people take that as a sort of a, a given, right? Um, you have a lot of advantages to being a business owner. You have control over your time, your schedule. Um, a lot of times you feel like you have control over your salary because the harder you work, the more successful your business, the more salary you can generate, right? Uh, so there's, there's, there's give and take on uh, business ownership. If, uh, as a sole proprietor, if you're the owner, you die or retire or withdraw from the business, essentially, the business is done, right? Because you're the sole proprietor. Now, in general partnerships, um, a partnership is performed when the partners enter into a voluntary agreement. Partnerships based on verbal agreements can also be legitimate. Well-written agreements can prevent a lot of common misunderstandings. Um, this is important. Lawyers, expensive. Contracts, expensive. But it does clear up a lot of misunderstandings and it does protect both partners. Highly, 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 highly recommended. All right, some of the advantages and disadvantages. Partnerships have strong financial basis because there is more than one person involved. Uh, one of the advantages of working with my wife is that we complement each other very well. Our skill sets are very different. Uh, what I'm naturally strong at, she's not, and vice versa. And thank God for that, because she's really good at figuring out processes and um, details. I'm sort of a little bit more of a big picture, uh, charge ahead uh, type person. Uh, on the flip side, I'm really good at presenting something I've always enjoyed, I've grown to enjoy over the years. And while my wife can do that, she prefers not to. So we have very, a very neat balance when it comes to that. Uh, the responsibilities and skills are better divided and shared between partners. And forming a partnership is also easy. Partners may gain certain tax advantages from doing so. Partners are not responsible for themselves uh, are not only responsible for themselves, but also for their partner. Conflicts are more likely to arise. Yeah, two people, two sets of ideas, that's great. But you also might have two opinions about which direction to take, you know, which opportunities to take advantage of and to ignore. Uh, if a partner withdraws, it does pose a threat to the continuity of the partnership. 
partner who withdraws is still held responsible for the debts of the business entity um, that they had during the partnership. A limited liability or an LLP have at least one general partner and has at least one limited partner. Personal wealth of the limited partner is not at risk as long as the limited partner uh, partners do not actively participate in the managing of the business entity. LLPs will limit the personal risks of all involved partners. Different states offer different types of limited liability partnership protections. A C Corp is a business entity that aims at being a corporation and not only has to file the articles of corporation and pay the filing fees, but also has to adopt corporate bylaws. Forming a partnership, uh, forming a corporation, pardon me, requires more finance and it's costlier than forming a sole proprietorship or a partnership. So again, forming that C-Corp is more expensive. Okay. Common stock represents the basic form of ownership interest in a corporation, but some firms also prefer uh, to issue what's called preferred stock. A board of directors establishes the corporation's mission and objectives, and the board is rarely involved in the day-to-day -day workings of the company. Um, from a small business perspective, you'll see a lot of business owners make a distinction between ownership, management, and a board of directors. Um, sometimes small businesses will call these an advisory board, right? And these are folks who essentially will provide advice, right? They'll tell the owner um, or provide the owner with key observations about their business, about the market in which their business uh, is a part of uh, and the community or the audience in which they're trying to serve. Advisory boards, especially for small business, I think are an excellent idea. Uh, it's different from a board of directors. There's not necessarily a CEO or COO, but rather these are folks that are specifically providing advice and looking to help the small business succeed. So keep that in mind when you talk about board of directors versus an advisory board, there is a distinct difference. Okay, some of the advantages of a C corporation. Stockholders are not personally liable for debts incurred by the company. Corporations function as long as they're financially viable and stockholders want it to function. Owners can just sell their shares and withdraw from ownership. Corporation issues shares or sell formal IOUs called corporate bonds to raise capital. Corporations attract skilled employees because they can afford to pay the right salaries. Some of the disadvantages, corporations go through a complex and expensive opening procedure. A domestic corporation has to qualify as a foreign corporation before starting its operation in a different state. And the C corporation usually faces double taxation. Again, business formation is all about how much taxes you wanna pay as a business owner. So it's important, it's important to keep that in mind as you decide which one you're gonna choose. Okay, some of the disadvantages we've gone through, right? Let's move on. Some characteristics of the S corporation. These corporations are created after filing the appropriate documents with a government agency. These corporations are legal entities that are separate from their owners, right? In acquisition, the buying firm 
is known as the acquiring firm and the firm is purchased is called the target firm. After the process is over, the target firm ceases to exist, but the acquiring firm continues to trade its stock. When we're talking about acquisition, we're talking about buying, right? One company buying another company. Um, at times, you'll see one company buy another company and then totally absorb it, right? The other company's gone. Uh, Sprouts, grocery stores, back in the day, um, there were several different types of Sprouts. There was one called Henry's, and it was the same concept, right? It was a fresh grocery store, right? A lot of fresh food, fresh vegetables, sort of the more the healthier options out there. Well, Sprouts continued to grow, and they bought out Henry's, and Henry's ceased to exist. All Henry's grocery store location became Sprouts as well. So Sprouts was the acquiring firm, Henry's was the target firm. And once the deal was finalized, all of the different Henry's locations became Sprouts. They ceased to exist. So forming and managing an LLC. Organizers of most limited liability corporations also draft, draft an operating agreement, which is similar to the bylaws of a corporation. Some states also require LLCs to publish a notice of intent to operate as a limited liability company. All owners of a limited liability company have limited liability, meaning that they can be sued for some things, but for the most part, you can't come after them personally. The loaners of an LLC have the option to treat the LLC as a corporation or a partnership. LLCs need not hold regular board meetings. LLCs can have unlimited number of owners. The articles of organization and the filing fees make it difficult to set up LLCs. Many states have laws that make it mandatory for LLCs to pay a franchise tax. LLCs must qualify as foreign companies for starting operations in other states. And most states do not allow banks, insurance companies, and nonprofits to operate as LLCs. You might be thinking to yourself, why is that? Why do, have, why do states have that rule? Well, again, what's that one thing I said to have in the back of your head when it comes to business ownership? Yes, taxes. The answer is taxes. States have rules so that they can tax these companies. Okay, all about the taxes. Franchise. So before I get into franchises, I guarantee you, every one of you within the last three or four weeks have been in a franchise of some sort. So you're probably thinking to yourself, I've not, I don't know where a franchise is. Franchise is. I'm not sure I've ever been in a franchise before. Well, if you're like me, you like fast food, right? So if you've ever been in a McDonald's, you've been in a franchise. The majority of McDonald's in the United States are all franchise locations, meaning they have individual owners that have bought into a system to provide food in a, in a timely manner, right? And so most McDonald's aren't corporate owned McDonald's, they're franchise owned. They're owned by individual owners. Subway is another one. Baskin Robbins is another one. Jersey Mike's, um, Round Table Pizza, Pizza Hut. These are all different types of fast food stores, right? Fast food service providers. And typically they're franchise owned, they're individually owned. So this is the fourth type of business ownership. Franchises um, is one of the most popular ways of operating a business, okay? Now, when it comes to franchising, there's different types of arrangements. Uh, distributorship and business format franchises are the most common types of franchise arrangements. In distributorship, the franchise makes a product and grants distributors to a license to sell it. In business format franchise, the franchisor grants the franchisee the right to make and sell its good or service. And this is 
the fast food example we're talking about, right? Uh, McDonald's, the corporate entity, gives permission for a fee, the franchisee, the individual owner, to sell their burgers and their McNuggets, right? So one of the biggest trends in franchising for the past several years has been an expansion into foreign markets. Uh, if you've ever been down in TJ, you can find a McDonald's or a Carl's Jr. or a Burger King uh, and, or a Subway for that matter when you're down there. Um, this is an example of that. It's easier to get into foreign markets now. Uh, another notable trend has been the growth and the number of women franchise owners. They own about 45% of all franchises. That's an incredible statistic. Uh, here, I don't wanna skip over that. Minority participation in franchises has been relatively low. And the reason for that is that it's not easy to get into a franchise because the licensing involved with it, there's a lot of upfront money that you need to provide in order to become a franchisee. Um, and so let's jump into the advantages and disadvantages. So franchising is less risky. It's less risky because they've already got a system, they've already got a product, and there's national name recognition, right? The franchisees are usually trained and supported by their franchisors. Franchisees attract customers because they enjoy the instant brand recognition, right? Banks and other financial institutions don't hesitate to loan funds to franchisees as well. So there's easier access to funding. The initial franchise fee and other fees and the franchisor fee make franchising a costly process that upfront cost can be significant. Again, McDonald's, for example, some of the upfront cost can be anywhere from $125,000 to $250,000 for an individual store. So it, it does require a lot of startup capital. The majority of the control lies with the franchise or not with the franchisee. You want to make triple cheeseburgers, right? At McDonald's. Uh, up until recently, or quadruple cheeseburgers, right? Up until recently, we've seen triple cheeseburgers come on the menu every now and again, but it's usually a cheeseburger or a double cheeseburger. You, as the franchisee, right, the individual store owner can't make that decision to add that to the menu, right? Otherwise, you're violating the rules of your contract. Only a corporate can make that decision. So you have no creativity when it comes to marketing, menu, product, etc. So that's one of the disadvantages, there's lack of control, right? A single franchisee's mistake can harm, uh, cause harm to the entire franchise and franchise agreements restrict the franchisee's territory. Um, these are two of the big, the big disadvantages. Um, I always use uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the biggest, most public flame mounts ever is Subway. Subway had the, uh, their spokesperson, Jared. I don't know if you remember Jared, um, but I, I encourage you to Google Subway, Jared, where is he now, uh, for an eye-opening thing. He, he essentially got busted for child pornography, and it did incredible damage to the brand of Subway. Um, and so, you know, you don't have, if you owned a Subway store, there's no way, obviously, you could control that. Um, so that type of mistake has a direct impact on your store, right? Uh, a lot of people see a story like that and they're like, oh, I'm never going to Subway again. I can't believe they have such, such a guy as their spokesperson. You have no control, right? Um, similarly, you don't have any control over new product ideas, right? They launch a new product, you have to launch it. The franchise agreement is a contract between the individual store owner or the individual owner and the franchise or, or the corporate office, if you will, okay? Under Federal Trade Commission rules, the franchisor must give the franchisee at least 14 cal calendar days to review 
the disclosure document, the franchise disclosure document, or the FDD, before the franchise agreement can be signed. A careful study of the FTD can go a long way toward ensuring that the franchisee makes an informed decision. Now, there's a phrase called the devil's in the details, right? Well, when it comes to business, signing contracts, don't sign anything right away. I don't care if you're talking about a franchise or if you're talking about a business acquisition or if you're just talking about hiring a vendor to do your IT or your marketing for you, read the contract. No one likes to read the contract, right? No one likes to read the directions on a test. You see a bunch of multiple choice, you're gonna jump right in and do it, right? I had a teacher who said, read the directions before beginning the test. And then you turn it over and the test is a bunch of true, false, multiple choice. And this is gonna be easy, it's true, false. 80 questions, true, false, 20 questions, multiple choice, I got this. And the directions say, please answer the last question. Anyone who didn't do that spent an hour and a half, an hour filling out the test and they didn't pass because they didn't read directions. You hate those things, right? Read the contract, read the contract, know what you're getting into. So terms included under franchise agreements, obviously terms, conditions, fees, and other payments, training and support, all of these things need to be looked at carefully. Um, these are key items normally covered in your franchise agreement. Specific operational requirements, conflict resolution, the manner in which the corporate entity and you as the individual store owner will go about resolving any kind of conflict. Assigned territory. This is one of the other big disadvantages, right? And, and I look at um, Starbucks as the perfect example. If you're a franchise or uh, a franchisee, a franchise owner, an individual owner, and you buy into Starbucks, right? Great brand, great coffee, great success. Um, amazing company, right? But I can stand on the corner of Mayor Mesa Boulevard and I have one, two, uh, two choices. Right. I can go to the Starbucks next to Cold Stone, right? and over there by on the Home Depot side, or I can go into Barnes and Nobles and get a cup of coffee there. If I go into another shopping center, I can walk into a Vons or a Ralph's and get a Starbucks, or I can walk into the store three shops down and sit down in their shop. Right? There's a Starbucks everywhere, everywhere, and they're usually right next to each other. If I'm an individual owner. Do I want another Starbucks option right across the parking lot? No, right? And so this is assigned territory. You don't have say over where they open up another location. Uh, so this is an area, this is an area that's also definitely a disadvantage when it comes to being a franchise E. All right, it's a quick chapter. It's a little dry, but there's a lot of different uh, examples out there. Uh, I've linked up uh, a second video that just shows how simple it is to get a license here as a sole proprietorship in San Diego. Um, it really is the quickest way to become your own business owner and the easiest way, right? Um, I, I have a friend who sits on the, the San Diego Small Business Advisory Committee. Um, these are all business owners who advise the city on ways to make it easier for small businesses to start and flourish here in the city of San Diego. Um, and their whole thing when he first started was, can we get the startup fees to be as low as possible? And in his time, they got it down to $35. So this is, uh, again, the easiest way, especially here in San Diego, to start your business is to go through that route. So take a look at the video, but it's a less than two minutes. Um, uh, I encourage you to take a look at the benefits of franchising. That's also available on YouTube. It, uh, it's just great background or context information for this chapter. Uh, there, I know a lot of people who are actually have franchises um, and who actually uh, enjoy it. Um, I know a couple who own quite a few Jersey Mike stores here in town. Uh, so 
it, it, it's completely a viable business option. Uh, and it's fun, you know, it'd be fun. I'd have fun owning a Jersey Mike's. I like sandwiches. Uh, anyway, this is chapter six. Continue sending in your assignments, your discussion boards. I love reading them. Uh, let's also remember that later this week, another video is going to pop up. It'll be short, but it will be a review of what to expect on your first exam, which is due at the end of the week as well, beginning of next week. Uh, so good luck. Keep those emails and texts coming if you have questions or concerns. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be seeing you soon for the, the exam review and then chapter seven next week. Have a good week, everyone.